Hi, I'm barbecue enthusiast Chris Bethiger, and this is Hogtown Barbecue, the show that profiles barbecue smokehouses all over Toronto. And today, we're in our place, Uncle Smoke Cookhouse, where you can dine in, eat out, or you can buy some stuff and heat it up at home. So get your apron on. Today, we're going to learn how to make award-winning spare ribs. Uncle Smoke is a southern comfort food and barbecue company. We started about two years ago as a catering and events company only. Uh, we had a production kitchen, we would do uh, big uh, concert festivals. People kept asking us over and over again, where do we get your food? And we'd never be able to actually tell them. We uh, were rated by Toronto Life as best new barbecue in Toronto. Uh, and our phones started ringing off the hook. We realized that we had something interesting happening, so we started looking for a place. And, uh, and then we ended up with, uh, with this place here. I come from advertising and, and marketing uh, originally, uh, but I just have eaten a lot of barbecue in a lot of different places. So food has always been a passion of mine and you know, having the opportunity to work in, in this way, you know, where uh, you know, I get to work with people who really know how to make food and I get to uh, find ways of getting that to, uh, to the consumer is, is really exciting for me. Aiden Gallian, our chef, you know, comes originally from St. Louis, grew up kind of in the heart of uh, barbecue country in the States. Uh, went to culinary school, so he's classically trained. So we have a guy that can put out you know, really authentic southern barbecue food, but also has the, uh, the background working in these amazing you know, big French restaurants. Uh, can manage a kitchen, can really you know, put out food at a very, very high level uh, and, and incredibly consistent stuff. So we're, we're really blessed to have him. Okay, chef, so uh, tell us a little bit about what you're making today. So today we're going to show you our pork spare ribs. How we start? We start with the rub. At Uncle Smoke we do a 831 rub, which is eight parts sugar, yep. three parts salt, and one part chili. Cool. And we start with the brown sugar. Goes in the bowl. That's eight parts by volume, so I just kind of measured out with a tablespoon. Got it. A salt. And that's just a regular salt? This is kosher salt. Kosher salt. Yep. And chili. One part chili. And that's chili powder or This is ground Mexican chilies? chili powder, so it's got some cumin in it and some other things that uh, cool, like accentuate the secret, rub. Secret spices? Yeah. Got it, spices. got it. And if you want to add anything else to accent the uh, flavor, we add it in parts by one. Okay. So we're, we have black pepper, one part of that. Paprika, yep. one part of that. And today we're using mustard powder, one part of that. And this we just mix up until it's nice and fine. Homogenous mixture. And then we move on to the rub. And here we have the ribs. Holy crap, those are the biggest ribs I've ever seen in my life. What kind of uh, what kind of ribs are these? I've never seen any this big. So these are country style ribs. And what makes them country style? That means they haven't been trimmed. They've been taken off the belly. So the belly meat would have sat here. And that's trimmed off for bacon. Then you have the ribs. And they have, they still have the skirt on them. And they have a little piece of the breastbone here. First we take off the skirt. And just make sure you have a nice sharp knife so you don't hurt yourself. That's our trim bucket. And then uh, we have to take out this breastbone. So here we have we have the rib bones, and there's some cartilage in here, which we call rib tips. Yep. And they connect to this breastbone, which has to come out. And then the next step is to take this membrane out. So connecting the to the bones is a membrane. The best thing to use is a butter knife. I, whenever I do this, it takes me like an hour to, uh, yeah, to well, move it. it. Is there a trick? There's kind of a trick, but you also just have to get lucky. See, this has a gash here. Yep. So that's gonna come off in two pieces. It's gonna be a little more difficult, but if you just pick a bone in the middle and get your butter knife under there, and then you just wanna pull it up. Just for the viewers, what, why do you take the membrane off? What's the importance of it? Well, because it's, it's protecting the meat here. If you leave it on, then the rub doesn't penetrate the meat, yep. the smoke won't penetrate the meat. And the next step is to rub them. It's just like, just like the pores on our skin, this is all pores. Yeah. It's all pores meat. And if you rub it in, then you're, you're, you're blocking those pores and the, the juices can't come out as easily, and you want to let this wait, uh, kind of marinate in the rub for at least an hour. And if you've got a big fat rack like this, mm. you know, you might want to do this the day before, so it uh, penetrates the meat a bit more. 
So we've trimmed our meat, we've removed the membrane, and uh, we've seasoned it. What's the next step, chef? And now we get lit. All right, great. <laughs> Okay, Chef, this is a pretty sweet rig. What do we got here? This is a Southern Pride gas assist smoker. Let's put the ribs on there. Now that we got it in, uh, how hot and, uh, and how long are we going to be cooking this for? We cook everything at 250 here. Yep. That's kind of the sweet spot for us. For ribs, we'll do two hours. This thing's a bit of a beast, so it cooks quickly. Yep. We'll do two hours for ribs, take them out, wrap them, and then they're perfect. Maybe you can tell us a bit about um, how people would do this at home. How do you get a sense of how long you need to smoke your meat for? If you're doing it on your barbecue, if you're doing it on your home smoker. First, you want to get your temperature correct. So pick your temperature, whether it's 225, 250, and make sure that's steady. But you really just want to go until it's tender. If, the, if it's firm and you're, it doesn't bend, then it's not ready. Okay. And then when if it snaps, then it's totally ready. Got it. Now that we're cooking, what's the maintenance, Chef? Well, we just have to baste the ribs. These, this rack's been in for about an hour. What kind of vinegar is that? This is apple cider vinegar. It's nice and sweet. Just like you, Chef. <laughs> now, how often would you, uh, would you baste it? I start at the one hour mark. Yep. And then I do it every 15 minutes after that. Great. Well, that does not look terrible. Looks good, huh? Wow. So what are we doing next? Then we carve it. So as you can see, it's just got a little bit of break and it's got a lot of bend. Right. That's when you know it's finished. And then you just store it on the bones, right in the center between the two. Man, I love barbecue sauce on pretty much everything. Um, what's your take on sauce? Do you, uh, if you were cooking for yourself, would it be saucy? For myself, I love sauce. So I'll drown it, I'll drown it in sauce. I'll have, might have the first rib dry, yeah. but then I'll sauce all the rest. The sauce guy. And that's a plate of uh, barbecue spare ribs. If you Wikipedia St. Louis barbecue, they are the largest consumers of sauce in the US. <laughs> Whatever that means. I don't think it's all going on their barbecue. Sounds awesome. I think I might be the largest consumer of sauce in Canada, so. <laughs> probably uh, prepare myself for this. Yeah, I'll serve you the barbecue, Chris, but I won't pay for the dry cleaning bills on your <laughs> finely textured shirt. No, nothing will hit my shirt. It's all going in my mouth. And we hit that nice window where it's uh, still got some chew, but it's not falling. Not much. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah you do. Smooth. <laughs> I really, really like barbecue sauce. In fact, I uh, have been known to drink barbecue sauce from time to time. It's a bit of a weird thing. It's more of a, more of a problem than a talent, I guess. <laughs> I didn't even chew that piece. <laughs> Two or four, chef? Four. Next, chef. So generally, you want a very quiet kitchen because you have to be able to hear people communicating with each other. Every request I make, I need to hear the people answer me back. Right, boys? Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Uh, we serve all of our food on, uh, you know, uh, stainless steel trays with uh, butcher paper on them. You know, so it's really rustic. You know, you can have a cool kind of eating experience here, but it's really designed to be uh, kind of takeout. But we do have nine seats, so that people can uh, can dine in if they want to. You can do it. Just gotta breathe. <laughs> just gotta breathe. This is so good. Tell me every, everything you love about that sandwich. <laughs> now. It's delicious. God hates a quitter. Come on. <laughs> Do you even remember what you ate? You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah. It's great. I, I ate some of his. I ate some of his. I might take this home with me and just save it for later. Save it. Yeah. Just put it in Smell your pocket. It. Yeah. 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 Rub it all over yourself. Yeah. yeah. Go. Yes. <laughs> Uncle Smoke is located at 2285 Dundas Street West where there's lots of parking out front. It's open Tuesday through Saturday for lunch and dinner. Guess what? You just watched Hogtown Barbecue. I'm barbecue enthusiast Chris Pathiger. See you next time. Are all of these for me? <laughs> <laughs> Those are all for you. They're all for me. Get in there. Only have to three. And uh, look happy. I'm ha I am happy. I uh, will look happy. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I'm here like, what, like three, three, four times a week? Yeah. I was actually sort of kidding, um, but, but you really sold it, man. That's yeah. pretty cool.